Hello everyone. In uh, today's video, we are going to take a look at one of the most fashionable lines of the Queen's Gambit declined. So uh, when we prepared the, the chessable course with Angelica, there were two or three games uh, for this variation. And uh, basically after one week, we finished uh, the material Caruana played it in a super tournament against Firuja, and then it became very, I mean, relatively popular and like 20, 25 games I, I could find now in the in the database uh, for this variation. So in uh, in this current game, it will be Hare Krishna against uh, Zvirs, and it was played very recently in the European uh, club cup in uh, in Austria. So let's see what is this line. Again, uh, game started with c4. Somehow it uh, looks like a trend in uh, in my channel that we reach uh, d4 positions from c4. So knight c3, d5, d4, knight f6, c takes on d5, e takes on d5. Bishop g5, c6, e3, h6. So this is the common move order. Bishop h4, bishop e7, bishop to d3, castles, knight to e2, knight bd7, short castle, rook e8. And yeah, basically this is the, the starting position of the variation and you know, 99% of the time white is like automatically playing f3 since there is nothing, so to say, wrong with f3, immediately preparing to push in the center with e4, which is our general strategy. But black found a quite uh, nice idea against this, uh, this f3, and that is to play b5 which at first sight looks very anti-positional, so weakening the c6 pawn, uh, the c5 square. But uh, the idea is that uh, black wants to attack this knight at some moment, which supports uh, the e4 break and also opens the way for the bishop and later for the rook to, to attack the center from the, from the side playing b4 or c5. So one possible continuation is that, okay, we play our usual preparation with bishop f2, uh, black goes bishop b7, we play king h1, let's say black plays bishop f8. And it's not uh, even that trivial to push for e4, because if e4 then takes, takes b4. So here we can see the point of this move that uh, this way black can uh, even win the pawn on e4, but okay, even if white is not doing this, black can play something like rook c8, followed by a6, c5, or b4, c5. And according to, to current theory, black is doing pretty well, so it's not that easy uh, with white to to play e4 with, uh, with good uh, circumstances. I mean, the game is complicated, but uh, black is doing well, so that's why in the course we recommend this uh, rare move and you know if b5 looks anti-positional then a4 even more so so the move looks very very wrong basically it completely gives up on the on the minority attack because it weakens the v4 square and you know basically our structure is already not good on the queen side and uh, yeah, so now basically we put everything on f3, e4, but you know, there is also a quite simple point of this move once we understand that f3 is answered by b5. Now there is no b5, and this we very seriously uh, limit or like even stop this counterplay from black. So that's, uh, that's the point of this a4 move, and now. Uh, it enjoys quite a great uh, popularity. I mean, the results are balanced, so it's not like black is doing uh, 
too badly, but uh, okay, we can uh, we can improve on the games which have been played, and uh, I'm quite optimistic for this line for white in general. So there are here many possibilities for black. Uh, the top players or the highest rated players uh, ignore uh, this A4 move in the sense that they play some knight h5 or knight f8, saying that white doesn't really want to do uh, anything with a5, which is in some sense true, but uh, not in every variation. So uh, it's a little bit of a tricky situation for black. We will uh, look at it in uh, in later videos. So in this game, uh, black played a5, just positionally an extremely natural move. So controlling the b4 square and basically clarifying the situation on the queen side in, in black's favor, I would say. So it's it's an absolutely logical move. The problem is that you know after Hare Krishna's next move, which is f3. So with the inclusion of this a4, a5, we made it much harder for black to to create counterplay on the queen side. So black played knight to f8, king to h1, that's very, very logical. Our normal prep preparation and knight to e6, also very logical. Um, black is putting pressure on the d4 pawn, so making uh, e4 more difficult to achieve. And to be honest, the next move I don't really like from Hare Krishna. So, I mean, we have a clear plan, and I mean, we can try to to be extremely subtle or something, but I, I really don't see anything wrong with Bishop F2 here. So, that's what we want to do. We want to push E4 in the next move. I I don't really see anything uh, anything wrong with it. So. I would have played certainly uh, bishop f2 preparing e4 and it looks like a good position uh, to me so for example if black just plays a so to say nothing move like b6 trying to finish development then we push e4 uh, d takes on e4 and of course f takes on e4 so once again i would like to highlight that we want this kind of center not to take back with the piece on e4 and there are some interesting uh, possibilities for black here. I mean, basically, once again, if nothing happens right away, I mean, white is just clearly better with this center. One of the typical ideas is knight g4. So I hope you remember from previous videos that that's why we earlier removed this bishop to f2 to cover e3 or at the end and once. So now we go bishop g1 and black plays c5. So he has to do something with the center. Uh, but, you know, thanks to this a5, a4 inclusion, now it's in white's favor. So, for example, we can play bishop b5. It's a beautiful square for the bishop. And when the rook goes to f8, we play uh, something like knight d5. And uh, our activity of the pieces uh, will give us a nice, uh, nice advantage. So that's one uh, option. And the extremely instructive one is uh, is after c5. So white wants to, sorry, black wants to break uh, uh, white center here. So we go d5. Black goes knight to g5. And again, if we just uh, give a little bit of a time for black, then he's doing just perfectly fine. Like moves uh, like knight to g4, bishop to d6, controlling d6 and d5 and... Uh, Black is completely fine and can even get over the initiative, can take over the initiative. But uh, white has a really, really nice solution. So it is e5. So again, this is extremely powerful move. Okay, the, the first point is easy to see. So knight uh, d5, we take queen d5, and this uh, discovered check on h7 is uh, winning the queen. That's not possible. But there is knight to g4. And that's pretty annoying. It attacks the bishop on f2. 
and it also more importantly even attacks the pawn on e5 which uh, pretty much looks impossible to defend so so it looks like that actually black has serious counterplay but actually black is completely losing in this position because of this very nice move bishop g3 so basically this is the one move which can protect the pawn for a second it looks like it's impossible because of knight to e3 but after queen d2 knight f1 rook f1 despite being an exchange up black is completely losing so this is an absolutely hopeless position uh, despite being an, an exchange up white can play moves like bishop c4 d6 e6 in the air knight can join the game from b5 this is also h4 idea is there so computer already gave like plus four advantage for uh for white despite being uh, an exchange down so it's simply unplayable so that's the power of the of the central pawns in this uh in this current line so yeah i believe that would have been just uh simple and uh and good solution and another move which uh, i believe Hare krishna was possibly concerned about is c5 but here we can play uh, bishop g3 for example to activate the bishop and since we pretty much have to give up on e4 idea the black starts with c5 but again i, I can say that uh, white should be pretty happy about the about this inclusion the b5 square can be used by the bishop by the knight and even though black can reach a symmetrical position the the activity of the minor pieces are uh, the most important here and it's definitely in once again the possibilities possibilities are in, uh, uh, in white's favor here so one nice idea to to know is that if black wants to do something with this g3 bishop we can go to e5 sometimes this uh, i mean or rather this this happens uh, quite often in the london system when uh, this f4 bishop is targeted that it first goes to e5 and then when f6 is played then it retreats to to g3 so these squares here are uh, very very weak for black so yeah, simply bishop f2, and I really like uh, white's chances. Hare Krishna played rook c1. Uh, this move looks very normal, but there is a there is a reason I don't like it, and uh, we will see it later. So it's definitely aimed against c5. So now we are, of course, you know, let's say c5. We take here. We are much better and prepared for c5 because of this pin here against uh, against the queen. But what happens if black is not playing uh, this move and of course he did not he played b6 and now Hare krishna played uh, bishop to f2 so i believe in this position uh, black could have played much better than uh, than playing c5 which is very similar to to the original bishop f2 uh, what i showed to you so there is e4 threat in the position now that's clear so for example if uh, black plays a so to say normal developing move then we just play e4 and after trade trade again we achieve what we wanted and uh, the only only issue really is that this rook is on c1 uh, strangely enough it's not like such a lucky place for the rook for example if knight to g4 then uh, then we have to be somewhat uh, careful here and the strong move is queen to e1 so the point here is that we can give up our bishop because if we do that then uh, we have nice pressure on the on the f file bishop will come to c4 maybe knight later will join to to f5 and white is uh, clearly better you will you will understand the point of this queen e1 very soon from a from a different variation I believe after a more uh, logical move from black which is bishop a6 so trading the bishop looks uh, looks logical so we go e4 uh, d takes on e4 fe4 knight g4 again 
bishop g1. So now, of course, queen e1 is, is not a move because bishop is hanging. So bishop g1 and bishop g5. So this is exactly the reason why I don't like rook c1 and uh, why I believe we should be rather careful to, to play that move too early since we are not really afraid of that c5 push. So, and if not, then why, why to bring the rook? So this knight g4 connected with bishop g5 uh, and then bishop e3 gives some, some counter chances for black. So for example here, the most natural looking move, rook c2, is already uh, quite, a, quite a serious uh, mistake because of bishop e3. And uh, d4 pawn is hanging and also of course, uh, taking is not possible, but black wants to take on g1, and then knight e3 fork is extremely, uh, extremely unpleasant. So black is already better in this uh, in this position. Bishop a6 can be at why this uh, intermediate move. Bishop g1, king g1, and knight e3. So the correct move is to play bishop a6 first, and on bishop c1. There is a nice move knight to c1, and this makes uh, this line work. So this attack on the g4 knight will provide advantage for us. But again, it, it's it's a little bit complicated and unnecessary. Not speaking about the fact that black could have played something like rook a7, and it's really really tough for uh, for white now to to progress because black wants to play rook d7 which is an interesting idea to bring the rook uh, like this to to fight against the d4 pawn and then to play bishop b7 and now e4 d takes e4 f4 knight g4 is just not working well so if we go queen e one idea black doesn't have to take but plays bishop f6 and with rook d7 coming Suddenly our center is under a huge fire and it's it's not a good position simply. And if we go bishop g1, then uh, bishop g5 is coming. So yeah, after rook a7, I believe black's, the position is like uh, very, very complicated and uh, it's not, not clear to me how exactly white should proceed. But instead of all of this, uh, black played c5. So now I will do a highly unprofessional thing, uh, but at the same time I, I can give you some time, even without stopping the video, to uh, try to guess what could be the nice move for, for right here. Simply my computer is running low on battery, so I have to charge it. Yeah, so just one second. Okay, so sorry about this unexpected uh, break. So the correct move here, I believe, is since e4 is not coming again, to activate the bishop, to put it on g3, and then knight to b5 or bishop b5 can be a 
an idea for white. Instead of that, Hare Krishna went knight to g3. Also understandable to improve the, the knight. And nevertheless, I believe it was better to, to activate the bishop because as we will see after c, d, e, d. So as I earlier mentioned, the, the key thing here is the activity of minor pieces. And here black could have basically um, equalized the position by some active moves. Knight to f4 is a very nice one. So here if the bishop goes to b1, then bishop a6 is coming with a tempo. And if you give one, then bishop b4. So and black pieces are just fine and position is symmetrical and um, pretty equal. And the bishop b5, it doesn't change much. Bishop d7 is simply blocking and next move is bishop b4. So instead black played this bishop f8, which is just a little bit passive, then queen d2. So bishop returned to d6, of course, with the concrete idea of bishop f4 and bishop e3. I believe here black mm, played an unnecessary move. He gave up the pair of bishops with bishop takes on g3. It was simply much better to play. Uh, you know, we have knight f5 idea and knight b5 idea. And that is one move, knight c7, which blocks both. Of course, our piece is once again a little bit more active. We have ideas like bishop f4. So white is slightly better, but nothing so bad for black. But after bishop takes on g3, now it's a long-term advantage with the pair of bishops. And, you know, just imagine for a potential endgame, we have a, this bishop against these two pawns. And uh, that could get pretty unpleasant. So black played queen d6, g4, bishop d7, and knight b5. So offering black to completely give up the pair of bishops. I mean, it's obviously not a very tempting option. So queen e7, rook e1, rook to c8, and now nice move from Hare Krishna, bishop f2. So he wants to activate the bishop like bishop g3, maybe also thinking about some. Some annoying queen on the knight. So black traded, rook c8, rook e1, knight to e8. And here I believe best would have been just simply play bishop to g3 again, like com uh, completely stop these uh, ideas from the black knight and just activate the bishop and later look, look around what to do. Maybe even rook e5, next move is, is much better. He went for this rookie five, which is a concrete idea, but uh, Black had a very nice uh, uh, defensive resource here, which was probably missed by both players. And I mean, it's very easy to miss such moves when, you know, Black is so passive and pinned and everything. So Black played knight c7, just protecting the pawn on d5, but there was this beautiful move pin before. So the point is that Black is getting out of the pin and Okay, if we are not trading, then black is just getting very active. A4 pawn is hanging and so on. And once we trade, uh, the trick is that even though white is not only taking a pawn but attacking the bishop, he will be much worse in this position after knight f4, rook takes d7, and knight d3. So the bishop is under attack, pawn is under attack, and suddenly the most dangerous pawn will be this b4 one. So, so on queen b4, a4, Hare Krishna should not take on d5, but let's say return with the rook. And again, black has excellent chances to hold that position. So instead, knight c7, a little bit passive. Knight c7, rook c7, rook d5, and bishop a4. So this was black's idea not to lose a pawn. But now the bishops are getting stronger. So this bishop was a little bit uh, restricted by black's pawn. On d5, but once now the rook moves and the diagonal opens up, uh, b6 uh, is getting much weaker. So rook e5, queen d6, queen e3, protecting the pawn, uh, bishop c2, and yeah, I guess potentially in time trouble, uh, there were some mistakes here. Hare Krishna went uh, bishop b5. He should have just started with d5, and the position is. 
I mean, even if not winning, like practically speaking, it's very close to it. So the point is that, you know, if the knight goes to f8, now bishop b5, which is great. So bishop can uh, have a nice square on c6. We can pin the knight later, b6 could fall. So that is just very good. And if uh, instead black is taking on d3, then there is d takes on e6. And the the presence of opposite colored bishops uh, will make it very tough for, for black. So let's say fe6, rook e6. And a lot of squares are pretty weak. So instead, uh, bishop b5, and once again, a rather surprising move from uh, from black. Okay, so sorry, first uh, rook c8. That's not that surprising. But after bishop g3, the surprising move is knight takes d4. Of course, queen d4 is very easy because after rook e6, queen to d1. King h2 is just winning fe6, queen e6, and picking up the rook. And of course, if the queen is taking, then the rook is taking back. But the point after knight d4 is that even though we can give this check on e8, black takes. And after queen e8, it's a check and the queen is hanging, but the queen can block the check and eventually it's just a draw. So, uh, of course, white can try many other moves with the bishop, like bishop c4 even. Or Bishop a6, so it's very complicated still, but objectively black is doing fine. So, yeah, this was missed by both players. Instead, queen b4, d5, knight f8, and this is just a losing move. Again, this uh, entering such position is is really, really bad. So fe6, rook e6 again, completely crushing for white because with opposite colored bishop, simply that uh, g7 uh, pawn is lost. The king is too weak, so yeah. But instead, but after knight uh, to f8, rook e8 was extremely strong, and after the trade, the power of the d pawn is winning. So bishop b3, d6, bishop e6. That was the only way to stop the pawn, but it's an extra piece for Hare Krishna, which was. more than enough and this is the second piece and here black resigned so pretty interesting game i would say in this a4 line rook c1 i did not uh, really like and there were some things which i believe could have uh, been better in some positions but overall a pretty nice game from Hare krishna and uh, we will see more games in this line since as i said there are quite a few uh, developments